Hey there and welcome back. So you will have hopefully seen um, a little unboxing video I did a while ago about Randall's Candles and some of the fragrances that I got from them and also that they sent me. Now one of the big things, and I cannot stress this enough with fragrance oils, is you must, must, must test them all out. And that's not just to, to, to kind of get an idea of, of how they're going to smell, but also you're going to want to understand whether the fragrance oils accelerate your batter. So the batter that you use normally, are they going to do anything to that batter? Are they going to make it um, thicken up? Are they going to rice? What are they going to do within that batter? And then also you're going to want to see whether they discolour. So you want to understand discoloration and acceleration in all of these um, fragrances. Now, these are small, tiny bits of batter. So there's only so much you can do with it until you get it into a big batch and then you'll see how it kind of reacts then. But this will give you a good indication. So what I've got here is I've got some little pots. They're one ounce pots um, and I'm popping some fragrance oil in and I'm putting it at 3%. Now, you'll have to check the IFRA documents and all of the things associated with those fragrance oils to find out what the maximum usage is. If it's under 3%, that's the maximum you can use. And obviously being in the UK, we can only use up to 3% of a fragrance oil. Now I tend to do 3% of my um, batter weight, which means I'm actually coming in at slightly under 3%, um, but I find that a better way of doing it. Um, so you have to bear all of those things in mind if you're in the UK. In other areas of the world, there's, there's less regulation. So just be aware of those things. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just weighing out every single one of my fragrance oils. I'm writing down what the name is um, and I'm popping it into a numbered container. What that then means I can do is I can just basically have a number on them. I can have a list of everything on my computer. And I can go and I can say, OK, yep, yeah, this fragrance oil is going to accelerate and discolour. So I want to use it for this specific purpose or this one doesn't accelerate and it doesn't discolour. So I can use it for these things or even that it might retard um, the batter. So it might actually make it uh, slow down. So again, all of these things are really important when it comes to, to doing fragrances. So basically here, what we're doing is just writing everything down and getting each um, fragrance oil. Um, to the right weight, as it were, um, for the amount of, of, of batter that's going to go in here. And this will give me a good idea how these are all going to work. So we're just going to speed through this next little bit because it's basically the same thing again and again and again and again for all of the fragrance oils that I've got that I want to test. Now, I was a very, very lucky boy and um, the Randall's Candles also sent me some soap um, colorants. Um, so I've got four colorants here and I also want to test the colorants because I want to see whether they're going to work in cold process soap, whether they'll suffice upon saponification and how they work. Now, I've just looked up there and I've looked at the quantities of um, colorant that they suggest. And I think it was a 05 percent for a pastel shade and a one percent for a, a, um, a kind of a heavier shade. And it just so happened that um, one drop worked out as the kind of pastel shade amount and three drops worked out as a, a, a higher colour um, amount. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, I've got eight little pots. One will be for the uh, less colour. One will be for the greater colour and we'll see how that all works. So I'll speed through this a little bit again um, and we'll get to the making up the batter room and pouring that in. And so we move on to making the batter. This is a standard batter that I would normally use for making various soaps. It's a relatively medium trace, so I've got plenty of time to work with it. Um, and it's kind of a go to for, for kind of doing small batch things with. So we're going to use this one to add in, excuse the head there. I'm just checking trace and just making sure that everything's right with it. And once I'm happy with it, we're just going to basically get this all poured into um, into those molds. So 
I'm going to bring my little scale here, bring my first pot over. And I know um, because these were, I think they were, they were either one or two ounce. So I know that pretty much um, one pot is going to be the right amount. And all I'm going to do is just check with each one that I'm putting around about the same amount in. So they all have the same fragrance oil amount and they all have the same batter amount. And this is what's going to make it um, effective for me testing what they're going to do with regards to the fragrance oils. Fragrance oils. Uh, once it goes in, I'm actually just shaking it now. Um, so I'm going to give it a shake to make sure that's all combined really well. Um, and we're going to go through and do them all in exactly the same way. And so here we are back and um, I'm basically going to note down how things are going. Now I've got a control here, which is out of the pot. Um, and we're going to go through each one of these and see whether they have discolored and whether they have um, basically whether the smell is still there. So number one, clearly unstoppably worked, uh, giving it a quick sniff. And then we're going to see if these will come out. Pretty much none of them did. So um, we're not going to worry about that one too much. But again, we're looking at whether the discoloration is similar or less than. And again, you can see here very little discoloration and the smell was still quite good. So that was leather. So we'll just note down again that we didn't have any discoloration on that one. Uh, number three, which I think was our um, aloe vera and cucumber. Now, look at that. You can see there is a distinct color variation um, and it's gone kind of almost lilac. Um, and there are a few fragrance oils that do that. So again, what I'm going to try and do here, it was very soft. None of them came out. I, oh, I think I got one out at the end of the day. Oh, there we go. It was that one. So you can see here we've got a significant color difference. So when I come to use this one, I need to understand that if I'm going to put a just noting the number because that will go on my spreadsheet. But I'll know now that if I wanted like to use a purple in that, I've already got a purple base, so I'm, I'm going to be able to boost that color. So again, I'm not looking at these being wrong. I'm just looking at what they're going to do and how I can then work with that color discoloration or various things like that. Um, so basically, I'm going through these ones and checking them all off, noting it down on my list there. So number four here, um, and I'll, I, 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 I can't remember exactly which ones are which, but this one again, nice, strong smell. And if you look at this one, this one's actually lightened in color. Um, I don't think I this one out, but there we go. So but very similar, very, very similar. Um, so again, I'm going to note down that that doesn't really have any discoloration. And we're going to go through all of them um, in turn. I think number five was one that I had a relatively significant color change um, to it. So it is colored to a tan. But all of these things are really important when you are doing your uh, testing. Um, and because you want to know which fragrances to go to when you want to do certain techniques. So let's just speed through this little bit here. Um, it's it's self-explanatory, I hope. Um, and all you're doing is you're making sure that you know what your fragrance oil is going to do. And let's just get to our colours. Now, I was really interested in the colours um, that we got sent because I wanted to see how they matched with like micas. Um, and natural colorants like that. And I have to say, these colorants I was really, really impressed with. So, uh, first of all, we had a lilac color. And if you remember, it was a one drop for a lighter color and three drops for a slightly deeper color. And as you can see here, we're getting a real nice color difference between those two. And purples are notorious in soap to fail. Now, for me, this is an absolutely wonderful purple color. And I will be using these to create purples in the future. So that was an absolutely awesome uh, look at the, at the at the colors we got. And again, this was um, I think this was a peach or a tea, uh, sorry, peach um, or something along those lines. But look at that. Look at that orange color. It is vibrant. It is bright. And that was three drops. So a good squirt of that into some cold process soap. It's going to survive through. Uh, the next one was purple. And once again, I didn't see a great deal of difference, but if you look, I think this one is slightly deeper as a purple, whereas the original one is more kind of like on the red side, the purple is more on the blue side. So I've got some nice tonal differences in that one. Again, awesome. And the final colors 
was teal. Um, now, for me, if I was going to do something Tiffany orientated, here is the colour I would go to. So we've got some really nice colour variations and stuff going on in there. Um, the last four ones there, as I know people are going to ask, I had some additional fragrance oils that were not sent to me. Um, and I wanted to just check because one of them I'd used it in the past in one of my original soaps and it worked fine. And I went to use it again. Uh, and I think you'll know which one it is. 25. It discoloured horrifically. There'd been a change in the formula that I'd not spotted. And I wanted to understand which one of my fragrance oils it was. And it was this one here. Now look at that for discoloration. So I need to reformulate and rethink about that soap. And again, that's one of those things that as soap makers, we sometimes have to do. So there we have it. And that's how I test all of my fragrance oils. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And why not subscribe to my channel? If you do, make sure and click the bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded. Thanks a lot, Soapsters. And we'll see you again next time.